Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, family members. Um, just want to express my sincere condolences to the family as we gather here this morning in loving memory of Cowain folks. And as we come this morning, as we celebrate with the family a life that has been shared with us, I just want to share from this portion of scripture as we begin this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Can we stand for prayer at this time? Gracious and most heavenly Father, we come before you this morning giving you thanks, mighty God, for all that you have done for us. Thank you for journeying mercies. Thank you, mighty God, for your comfort, for your peace of mind. Thank you, heavenly Father, for all that you have been doing for the family even up until this moment. Lord, as we go through this service this morning, we ask for your leading, we ask for your direction. We ask, mighty God, that you'll just touch each and every one who will participate this morning, that through the hymns and the song, that your, names will, your name will be praised through the sermon and everything that will be shared here this morning, and that comfort and peace of mind will come to the family. We give you thanks for all that you're about to do. Bless us today. Guide us in Jesus' mighty and holy name we pray, and we say amen and amen. Praise God. At this time, we'll turn over to Sister. Mr. Wilson, who will lead us throughout the rest of the um, program, mother, grandmother of the deceased. Good morning. As long as hearts remember, as long as hearts still care, we do not part with those we love. They are with us everywhere. We are here today to Give thanks for the life of Kawain, for the seven years, 11 months, and 17 days that we were blessed to have him with us. We will start our service with our opening hymn. It's on your program, Jesus Loves Me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Please stand. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you. 
Jesus loves me. Jesus loves us. We remember when the mothers of Salem brought their children and the disciples turned them back. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me for I will and keep them to my bosom. We'll have the first scripture lesson read by Natalia Smith. It take, it's taken from St. Matthew chapter 18 and she will read from verses 1 to verse 5. Good morning. Our first scripture reading will be taken from St. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. And it reads, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Fifth and the last, and whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. This is the end of our scripture lesson. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. We'll follow the program for the tributes. First, we have Lanaman's prep, followed by early stimulation. Please follow your programs and come in that order. Lanaman's.
Our second scripture reading, and that will be done by Ms. Nordia Young. Good morning, everybody. It is such a sad occasion why we are here today, but God knows best. Um, the social worker who used to work with Kaween back in the days, I'm from Early Stimulation Program, Ministry of Labor. And on behalf of the Ministry of Labor, Early Stimulation Program, Mommy and Daddy, I just, we just want to wish you condolences, our deepest sympathy to you. I'm going to be singing a song. Be not, be not dismayed. What he God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you God will take care of you through every day oh God will take care of you. Lead weary one upon his breast. God will take care. That's my prayer for you. Of you. Help me sing the chorus if you know it. God will take care of you. This situation as we speak through hell every day, every moment, every day. Oh, the way he will, he promised, he, he will take care of you God will take care of you let us do the chorus once more 
Oh, yes, God will take care of you through every day, through hell every day, all the way, all the way. He, he will take care of you God will take care God will take care He promised he'll never leave us He will take care of of you God bless you Good morning, everyone. It's not the best time to read after a tribute like that, but I'm going to try and compose myself and do the best that I can for Kawin. Our second scripture is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through to 14, and it reads, Take heed that he despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an, have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and go it into the mountains, and seek it that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more than that sheep, more, the, more of that sheep, sorry, than of the ninety and nine which went astray, went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Sleep in peace, Gawain. Thank you. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Thank you indeed. These little ones all have their angel in heaven looking out for them. And that gives us hope. We will follow with the rest of the tributes. There's a song by Lana Mann's prep to be followed by St. George's Girls Primary and Infant, and then a dance by Lana Mans.
Good morning, everyone. We just want to offer our condolences to Mrs. Cook's folks and her family and to all the friends who are gathered here this morning to celebrate the life of Kawin folks. I know that it's rough, but you'll find rest in the eye of the storm. Like a ship sailing out on a trip so rough and long so far from shore so far from home i said I storm no matter what storm cloud may rock this ship of mine the light of my Savior will lead me safely On behalf of the St. George's girls' family, this is a bittersweet moment because I know Kawain's soul is resting in the arms of God. We present this to you to show our love and appreciation 
And as this lovely orchid grows, I know Kawain's soul will be growing in the arms of Jesus. So rest assured of our prayers and our continued support. There's a place for people like you. There's a place for people like me. That's good. Um, when we lose someone as young as Kawain, we tend to ask a number of questions. And, you know, in the book of Isaiah, he reminds us that his ways are not our ways. Neither are his thoughts our thoughts. As far as the heavens are, that's how far his thoughts are above ours. 
So in all things, we are reminded to give thanks. To give thanks, and we will give thanks for Kawain. We will give thanks for the time we had him. And he will always be in our hearts. Always. So we are giving thanks. Miss Shante Burgess will come to share precious memories with us about Kawain. And while she's on her way, I will just say, Kawain would have loved those songs. He loved music. He loved music. And he would really, really would have appreciated it. So Miss Burgess. Good morning, everyone. Kawain Caden Joshua Fuchs was born on January 23rd, 2014 at exactly 5.35 a.m. I remember waking up to the call from Karma that he was finally here, but he was in the nursery. A few weeks after that, I had the pleasure of meeting my godson for the first time. And oh, what a pleasure it was. He was a little small from being in the nursery, but he was looking dapper in his little outfit. Karma was sitting with him, and I said, hi, Cohen, and rubbed his head. Now, who told me to do that? Because the look of pleasure that I got indicated how much he enjoyed the head rub. It was one of his greatest pleasures to receive. Cohen was a sweet and sometimes miserable soul. Let me explain the miserable. Have you ever received a Kawain consult? Well, his parents can also attest to this fact. I would get cussed if he coughed, sneezed, or if I didn't present myself upon entry into the nursery where he went. Even when apologizing or saying to him it was just a cough, why am I getting cussed for you coughing? I'd still get the cuss. And Wayne can tell you about the three. Right, Wayne? The cough, the sneeze, and the, we know the other thing. I enjoyed the way his head would turn upon hearing my voice and the smiles that would come after. I looked forward to those smiles whenever I went to the nursery. It always warmed my heart how much he knew my voice and how I was gifted with those smiles. Cowan was a huge trickster. He had this thing he would do if he knew he was approaching someone he didn't want to hear from or see. He would either close his eyes and pretend to be sleeping or drop his head down into the crook of your neck and he would not move or open his eyes until he knew he had passed. He was a proper trickster. He didn't like water, so if you ever tried to give him some, his facial expression would change, and then he would start coughing like crazy. You would wonder, what is wrong with the water? If you ever tried, also, he did not like soup as he got older. If, if Karma ever made soup, she would, not, she would know, mm-mm, Cowan can't get none of this. And don't you ever try touching him with something cold. I think when he would visit, I live on the hills, 
And so when he would come up there, not even the wipes, I'd be able to take out of the container to put on him, his whole body would change. As he got older though, he started to face more challenges. And on December 11, 2021, his mom and dad took him to the hospital because he was congested and not breathing as he should. God saw that he was tired. And so, on January 9, a few minutes after one, after a visit from his parents, God decided to call his little angel home. And although we will miss him terribly, I find comfort in knowing that I'm sure he's in heaven watching over us and doing all the things he could not do here on earth. To Karma and Wayne, don't think of him as gone away. His journey has just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. And think of him as living in the hearts of those he touched, for nothing loved is ever lost, and he was loved so much. Sleep on, my sweet prince, until we meet again. Yes. That was Kawain indeed. Except, Miss Burgess, I don't know how you left out the eyes. The eyes. He would give you those eyes. If you bothered him too long, he would turn and look at you and you would know. Just get yourself away from here. Okay, we will get ready for the message from the man of God, his reverend Nakia Surgeon. His minister at the Waterworks and Glen Coran Holiness Church in Westmoreland. He's also the president of the Holiness Christian Church Youth Department. As he comes to us, we will just say, Oh, teach him, Lord, that he may teach the precious things thou doth impart, and wing his words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart. Reverend Surgeon. Again, let me say a pleasant morning to each and every one of you. And again, condolences from the Glen Curran Holiness Christian Church. We express our sincere um, condolences to the family as you mourn this morning and grieve the loss of your loved one. I want to share quickly from the Word of God, Isaiah chapter 55, from um, verse 6 to 13. I won't be reading in the interest of time, and I'll be just focusing on some of those verses as I share with you on um, three things that comes out of this um, portion of scripture and um, from what you are experiencing today. So we're going to look at the hurt, we're going to look at hope this morning, and we're also going to look at the help that comes um, from Almighty God. It's never easy losing a loved one, and um, more so a child have done many funerals in my year as years as minister as a minister and I've, this is the second one i'm doing for um, a child and um the hurt comes with it because 
when you bury someone that is 70, that is 60, you can say, yes, they have lived their life. But for a child um, to be burying a child, it seems very much um, unfair. The child haven't gotten a chance to live um, his life. And so that's where the hurt um, comes in. And I can just imagine for the um, parents um, this morning and um, loved ones, family members. But the word of God tells us in Isaiah 55, the word of God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Only the Lord know why he would take um, Kauai. He may or may not reveal the reason to us. Don't try to play, place the blame or fault. Don't get angry with God. It hurt because we don't understand why. And the many question comes because we don't understand why. But the word of God reassures us this morning. Isaiah 55 and verse 9 says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is omnipotent. He knows all things. And so we just have to put our confidence and our trust in the hands of Almighty God, understanding that He is good. And in spite of what you're faced with this morning, God is good all the time. His reason may not even be understood by our infinite minds. He is the great physician. And though it may hurt deeply now, we will, he will bring healing. The hurt may continue for a while. It may never completely go away, I want to say to the mother and father of Cohen this morning. It is there to remind us of what time we had, little though it may be. In spite of the hurt, the word of God reminds us that God will send help. He does not leave us without help. And I want to say to you this morning, God will help you as you go through this time in your life. Isaiah 55 and verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord for comfort. He is the God of all comfort according to John 14 and verse 18 says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He is called the God of all comfort in 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 3. We must also seek the Lord for strength and courage. Psalm 27 and verse 8, 4 says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Your strength is coming, my sister and brother. God will give you strength. You also need to seek the Lord for peace. John 14 and verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you. Let not your heart, sorry, not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The God of peace and comfort will give you peace in this time. We also need to seek the Lord for wisdom. James 1 and verse 5 said, If any man lack wisdom, let him see God for wisdom. You're going to need wisdom. You're going to need a peace and comfort of Almighty God. And most of all, we need to call on the Lord. We need to call on him according to Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. 
Call upon him while he is near. God is near to you. Call upon him. He will hear. He will help you according to Psalm 46. It says the Lord is a very present help in the time of trouble. And I just want to encourage the parents with that this morning that God is a very present help. Whenever you call on him, he will give you help. The hope that is found in the scripture in Isaiah 55, 11 to 12. The hope is found in God's word. Whenever it seems hopeless, whenever it seems like you can't carry on, there is hope this morning. There is hope for Kawain and there is hope for each and every one of us who are gathered here this morning and viewing by social media. We have the account of David in 2 Samuel 12 that gives us hope. The baby had been sick and David would not eat. He lay all night upon the earth and he fasted and he cried out unto Almighty God. I remember in the middle of a funeral service I received a call from Karma and she said to me that the baby is not doing well. And I stepped aside and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And God would have made some changes and made some difference and we were very hopeful. Like David, we were very hopeful as we prayed. But what we have seen here from David's story, when his friend tried to cheer him, they were not able to cheer him as they tried to cheer him up. But when they asked him why he responded the way he responded in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22 to 23. David said, while the child was yet alive, I fast and I wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? David asked the question. Can I bring him back? Rhetorical question. David no, he is unable to do so because this is God's doing. David said, shall I go to him? But he shall not return to me. David said, I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. David understood that the child has gone on to be with the Lord. And from the scriptures that we have read earlier, we realize that there is hope for the children. And many might have asked the question, what will happen to our babies? What will happen to our children? But from the word of God, Jesus remind us, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Babies go right to heaven you can go to heaven too parents loved ones we all can go to heaven and if you want to see Kawain again there is hope there is hope that we can gather together again and to celebrate the love of almighty God towards us there is hope for you as well my brothers and sisters and well wishers it is found only in trusting the Lord. According to John 14, it tells us that we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And so this morning we can trust God to heal the hurt, the pain that we are going through and to bring comfort and peace of mind to us. God can give you help in this difficult and rough time. And I just want to assure us that God can give you hope according to what is mentioned in Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is 
near. And I just want to share that with us today. Can we just bow our hearts as we pray for the family this morning? Mighty God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We glorify your awesome and wonderful name. Lord, we pray this morning that you'll just remember Wayne and Karma in a special way this morning. That, oh God, you will give them the strength that they need. That, oh God, you will strengthen their heart. Give them comfort this morning. And God, we trust that hope in you that they will put their hope and their trust in you, oh God. Knowing that they are able to reunite with their child if they only surrender to you. If they only put their all their trust and their confidence in you. Believe in that God you are able to do the impossible. Thank you mighty God for what you have been doing through this service. Thank you for the many things oh God that you have used your people oh God to do this morning to bring comfort and peace to the family. Continue to bless them. Continue to cover them. Continue to protect them as we pray your coverage over them. As we travel from one side of the island this morning to the next. We pray for journeys mercy we pray, God, that you will take every steering wheel into your hands this morning and that you will just lead and direct all that will be said and done throughout the rest of this service as we lay your child to rest. Thank you, mighty God, for all that you're about to do as we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we all say amen and amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Please turn your program to our final hymn as we close off on this portion of the Thanksgiving service for Kawain. We will sing the hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. And in the third stanza, we are asking that the Paul bearers come forward. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and
family thanks you for coming we appreciate it very much thank you for all you have done your support your prayers we thank you